every single node here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven nodes on this plant that have all activated. G'day you mob, how's it going? Welcome to this episode of Pete vs. Plants. I am Pete. And these are the plants! <laughs> so, today's an update. I have my Monstera Platinum Mint over here. It's sort of hard to tell on these older leaves, but it has this mint variegation on it. And I have my Thai constellation here that used to be, ah, it's still pretty pretty, but it used to be absolutely stunning, but I um, solved the tip. <laughs> Too many jokes that could come out of that. Anyway, not gonna go there. Um, yeah, so I thought I'd give you an update on these two puppies. So we'll start with the boring one first. Get out of here. Get out of here, interesting one. So the Thai, which has, the story is, and I will link the previous video where I chopped and propped it up above. The story is that I got this from a Ukrainian woman in Geelong, cost me about 590 bucks, and I think it was originally effectively this size with all these leaves, and it had one that was unfurling that was a stunning half moon. At the time, this was a good price for it. Um, it has been chopped once before, as you can see down there at the base, hence the, I think this is actually a growth point that has come out and then paused and hasn't actually continued. And then what we ended up doing after taking the main three leaf tip off it was chopping up all the sections under here. So there are actually three different sections and they each have an aerial root going down into the soil. So there's this one at the front, there is this one next, and then there is the entire main plant here. Now, I have noticed something really cool. When you do this, when you chop and prop these plants, Typically, especially when the stem is growing horizontally like this, you'll see it's sort of closer to horizontal there, growing along the ground than it is to vertical growing up. What you'll notice is that loads of nodes activate and they all start sending out growth. And what's gonna happen is they will do that, all of them will activate and send out growth until one of them takes over. Someone just knock at the door? No, it's just windy. So one of them will become the most advanced one. It'll start getting all of the growth hormone and it, the others will pause and it will just take off. And what you can do if you're trying to propagate a plant like this, when that happens, and you'll see that with the next plant, you can chop up the different nodes if you've got say, you know, root systems coming off and going down into the soil here. And hopefully that will mean all of those activated nodes, at least, the largest one on each of the cuttings that you've sort of created, even though they have roots, will continue to grow and won't actually pause. And so I'm sort of somewhat tempted to chop this up further because you can probably see down the base there that there's, there's obviously this one that's grown. One below that one has activated down here. And there's even one up here above that one that's activated as well. So I am somewhat, somewhat uh, considering slicing between here. The only thing that's sort of stopping me is that there, oh, and it, look, there's actually one over at the base here too of this one that's activated. That's pretty crazy, huh? The thing that's stopping me is that there isn't a leaf uh, that is coming out. If I were to make that cut, there's no leaf really there that's gonna be able to do a decent amount of photosynthesis, so it may really, really slow down. Whereas at the moment, it has, uh, at least that bottom, bottom one, has this leaf and the ones below to create carbohydrates through photosynthesis. So. I might not do it today, but I'm gonna keep an eye on these little growth points down here and see how they go. And if one or two of them end up shooting out a leaf, you know, maybe this size, and you can see this was the next one to come out after they'd made this cutting, and you can see it's sort of deformed. That, that happens quite often. I might then just give it the chop further so that I hopefully have a large plant here, well, many large plants here in a pot that I can keep taking cuttings from in the future to then sell. So yeah, there's the update with this guy. Uh, further along, I should mention, I can see, it's, it's hard to sort of show you guys because you kind of have to get right in there. But if you can see right in here, there is one of the axillary buds that has activated. That's the highest one up on the base plant here. The same thing has happened on this side, though it's sort of harder to see, but there is a bud right in there that is slowly starting to activate as well. And with the other cutting here, I can't actually see the axillary bud, so I assume that it is under the sheath here, and it has probably just started to activate too, but you're only gonna really notice once it starts growing and pushes past 
the the sheath that is sort of down here along the side of the stem. So yeah, and I think it's probably been about a month since I cut these guys up, maybe give or take. So anyway, that's number one. The, I was about to say Spirit of Sancti, but what the hell am I smoking? I was talking about that in a previous video. The Thai Constellation. Okay, now we have the Platinum Mint, and I think you're gonna see what's going on here with this one. So again, without smacking myself in the face, you can probably see that the base of this plant is growing horizontally along the surface of the soil. And as a result, and it was cut previously, and um, I should mention that previously it had been cut, it had leaves coming out, I think two other leaves when I first got it, but a bunch of these nodes had actu actually already activated but stopped. So I think these two had leaves, but nothing more. This one had activated, but was like down here. And the same with all these other ones, they were just sort of little tips with no leaves growing out of them. So anyway, I chopped it, I sold the tip cutting, which was, I think, I think it was two leaves, it may have been two or three leaves. And then I took two other cuttings from the base of the plant and I will link the video up above where you can go and see what it looked like originally and me chopping it up. And each of those had roots and I ended up trading those uh, with a fellow collector to get a really large elbow. So anyway, at the time, it already had a bunch of leaves coming out, but because it had sort of grown up and across horizontally and then someone had chopped it and the original chop looks like it was made here, and then the plant had grown out sideways. Because it was growing out horizontally, a lot of different nodes had activated. In fact, every single node here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven nodes on this plant that have all activated. It's, it's just, it's like literally every single node that had an axillary bud, which is every node, um, has activated and is currently in a race with itself to become the dominant growth point. So if I were to guess, I would imagine this is the one that's gonna actually end up becoming the dominant growth point. It's the furthest sort of along the development, uh, what would you say, um, trajectory. And so I think this one is gonna end up getting, is it apical dominance where it becomes the growth tip. It's, it's then pulling up all of the hormones, I guess more quickly through the plant. And as a result of those hormones not sitting around the base of the plant where there are other nodes, those nodes will turn off effectively and stop growing. And I think it's related to auxins. So if auxins at a higher level around ax axillary buds, it'll activate them. But as soon as one of the buds has developed apical dominance and it is the one that's growing really, really quickly, I think what's happening is it's sucking up all of the auxin out of the plant. It's traveling really quickly past these other buds. This is in layman's terms. I'm sure it's much more complicated than that. but as a result, these end up shutting off. So long story short, I'm gonna keep an eye on this guy. I have a feeling this one will be the one that gets apical dominance. But what I do wanna do is chop the plant up similar to the tie, the way that we did that with the tip here, so that I can get many more of these plants growing, giving me tips that I can take as tip cuttings to then later sell. Now, the other cool thing is that you will notice if I hold this up to you closely, that the bud that is furthest along this plant has also activated down here and is gonna shoot out some growth as well. So I'm gonna have like seven, eight different uh, growth points on this plant. And each of these nodes, I believe, has roots that have dived down into the soil here and is growing. They're probably pretty tightly packed together though, so cutting them up really, getting eight, or seven or eight out of this would be a bit risky, I think. But I reckon I could probably chop this up into at least two or three and you know it will survive okay and push out a whole bunch of growth points. But yeah, it is really cool to see this one shot out a leaf pretty quickly after I chopped it. I can see that a leaf is coming out of this one here too, although you know they're gonna be pretty rudimentary. And the really interesting thing that I love is the fact that this leaf that's coming out of this janky leaf or tip here, this is a fugly as leaf, is actually fenestrated. So if I turn this guy around, you can probably see that there is a fenestration, at least one right there. So it's gonna be really cool to see this guy out, uh, see this guy out, see this guy come out and see what he's gonna do. But yeah, I guess that's it guys. Those are the two updates for two of my mother plants that 
I'm really glad to have in the collection. I'd recommend trying out something similar to this if you want plants that aren't necessarily aesthetically pleasing beauty, beauty pieces in your house or shop or wherever it is. Give this a bell. It's potentially a way of saving a lot of space as well. If you can get three, four, five plants growing out of a single pot like this, from which you can take cuttings every, I don't know, three, four, six months, then you're gonna save a lot more on space than having this plant or these plants in separate pots. And the thing is too, they're gonna to size up very quickly. So you're gonna have larger plants that you need to sell and send, and you're gonna to have to have more space to be able to house them as well. Whereas if you keep them in a sort of contained space like this, they're probably not going to be able to fill out as quickly in that space with the root mass and then grow as quickly so that you end up with, you know, huge leaves that you have to somehow be able to chuck into a package and sell. So anyway, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're enjoying these December videos. Don't forget to check out all the others. It's one video every single day at the moment. We're probably getting pretty close to Christmas by the time this one comes out. So Merry Christmas if we are. And uh, yeah, go check this video out and I will see you there. Toot!